So, folks, um, my name is Sebastian. I am a PM on the Graph, on the Microsoft Graph Developer Experience team, and today I'm coming to um, introduce what we are currently working on um, uh, to bring a new major version of the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Um, first, as a quick, reca uh, quick uh, recap, what is the Microsoft Graph Toolkit? So um, we're going to cover that. Then we're going to talk about what's new in V4. And we have tons of news over there. So that's um, uh, really cool. Hopefully, you're going to be able to take advantage of all the nicey and shiny stuff that we're shipping in um, a couple of days from now. And finally, we're going to do some demos. We're going to see some live code and some live uh, stuff happening. But before, what's the Microsoft Graph Toolkit? The Graph Toolkit is a collection of reusable framework agnostic component and auth providers that allows you to connect to Microsoft Graph in a seamless way without even you thinking about auth, about components, about anything. You can think about them as drop-in components inside your apps that are already connected to Microsoft Graph and just looks like Microsoft 365. They're fully functional but they're customizable. So you can really bring them to look like your own app. You can bring them to uh, behave like your own app. And it works with any web framework. So you're not stuck in React or in Angular, in Vue, in Blazor, in name it. You bring the components where you need them. And we're going to provide some really cool capabilities um, um, to enable these different scenarios. And it works on all modern browsers, right? And I think today, basically, all browsers are modern. Well. That's how I like to think about the world. Not everybody will agree on that, um, but that's how I see it. Um, first, why would you use the, the, the Graph Toolkit? First, it costs on dev time. Building a person card, building a person component, building a people picker takes time, takes a lot of reflection, takes a lot of thinking, takes a lot of implementation time. We did all of that for you already. Just bring our people picker and use it. It's beautiful, but it's flexible. It looks like an M365 experience, but you can fully customize it and bring your own colors, your own theming. You can do all of that. And finally, it works everywhere. We have um, capabilities to let you build in um, on the web, on in Electron to build uh, some sort of um, Windows or Mac or Linux apps. You can really bring it uh, anywhere. Now, what's new in the version four of the toolkit? The toolkit is coming with a bunch of new capabilities, and I'm going to start uh, talking about the new capabilities, and we're going to go into some of the more maintenance thing that we have done. So first, what's new? We have tons of new things. Now, our to-do experience will support editing to-dos. So now you will be able to bring in a to-do component inside your application and being able to add new tasks, delete tasks, edit tasks, change dates, and so on and so forth. That will really, really, really position this component as a super productivity booster. Second thing, our people picker now supports presence. A good example is if you want to start a conversation, if you want to add people to a thread, if you want to add people to, I don't know, um, um, what you're building, uh, now you're going to know who's online and who's not. Really, really, really powerful. MGT search box and MGT search results are now generally available. So they, they were uh, marked as preview in the past. They will be fully um, available as uh, general availability. Um, our MGT picker, which is our generic way to pick an entity from graph, will now support uh, nested values and key name. What does it mean? It means that you will be able, for example, to use localized capabilities, for example, on the taxonomy picker, um, to go and select the French version of a, a word or the Spanish version of a word. That's going to be great for boosting productivity in terms of development time. Um, and the MGT people picker also now supports rendering the person card as part of the selected items. That's something we were not uh, uh, promoting before or not allowing. Now people will be able to, to view the full person card on selected items uh, right there. Um, auth providers. 
The Graph Toolkit is a community effort, right? It's all open source, it's on GitHub, and we have people that really care about their experience, the way that they're thinking about their apps, the way that they're thinking about their, um, uh, their development. And we have a community member um, that came in and created something called an Electron Context Bridge Provider that really brings MGT into the modern world of Electron to build uh, Windows, Mac apps. So that's really, really, really cool. So we're really excited about this one. Uh, we're seeing a lot of usage in Electron of, of the Graph Toolkit because it's, it's cool. It's in the, it integrated in the native experience. Now, from a developer experience standpoint, we have improved a lot of things. First, we're deprecating ES5 in our MGT loader. You will not be able to use the MGT loader to bring um, MGT on a page, you will need to go through um, regular script modules to do that. Why? Security reasons. It's becoming a really, really big deal to um, uh, have a loader-like experiences, but also all modern browsers supports it today. So we love to think that developers should be using modern ways to build apps, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, we're gonna bring lighter bundle sizes. So now, Every single time you're gonna use a toolkit, we're gonna to bundle just what you're using. Meaning that if you're not using the person card, we will not be bundling it for you. So all the bundle size, either in React or using the, the web components, will be super lighter. We're making massive async performance enhancements because we have been upgrading our um, base framework called Lit um, to the latest version, and we're taking advantage of a lot of, of their work. So really, really cool stuff there. Um, we now have scope aware requests, which was probably one of the biggest complaints from developers. Let's pretend that your app um, has user.read.all already consented. The user can do user.read.all. Our components did not know about this. And our components only needed user.read. So when you were accessing an, um, an area that this component was um, uh, being made visible, we would prompt you to for your consent as a user. Now we don't, because we know that user.read.all will work as a supersede of user.read. So the experience for the end user and the way that you're thinking about your components as a dev is hugely better um, the way that we're building this. Um, our enums will become string unions, better for devs, better experience, better for docs, everything is just better there. Um, we are gonna deprecate the MGT SPFX package now that we have completed our work around disambiguation. So you will not need to have that package dropped into your app catalog to uh, leverage a toolkit. That's a thing of the past. You will now bundle all the components you need of the toolkit inside your app, and um, everything should work by default starting with v4. That's going to be a lot easier also to acquire apps built with MGT on, um, on the store. Um, now we're going to have a logged in experience in MGT.dev, so our playground where you can play with MGT and learn about how to build stuff will now uh, have the ability to be logged in. You're going to get now React snippets as part of our ng.dev and on Learn. So all of our documentation will now include React snippets, which was a big miss for us in the past for technical reasons, but now it's there. And finally, we're going to have a full Stack Blitz integration. So um, that's what is new, and that's why we had to bring all of these really, really cool things. There's a lot of foundational things that are breaking changes. We have a ton of breaking changes in that, in that, um, in that version. So please uh, check it out. But we're excited about this. We are a couple of days away from shipping the official V1, well, not V1, V4 version, the GA version. So uh, please uh, keep that in mind. And so many bug fixes. Just gonna put them there. That actually, that list might, might that, that list might actually grow. Um, but we have so much bug fixes uh, that I tried to make them all fit on a screen. It did, but it's kind of a little uh, small here. Um, so let's go and let's do a little demo here and show you what's really new here. Let me do that and let's hope that 
not too many things are broken. Uh, well, we should be good. Um, so first, we have a new experience for our playground. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is, let me zoom in a little bit so it looks OK for you, all of you. Uh, we now have a sign-in experience. Now you can sign into the playground to play with your own data at your own risk, but with your own data. That means that you're not only leveraging the content that lives in um, the Microsoft Graph Sandbox, which is the one we're also using for the Graph Explorer, but now you can actually play with your data. So let's start with this. I'm going to go, I'm going to sign in here. Um, hopefully everything works. Let's call for the demo gods today. Yes, I want to stay signed in. And there we go. So now um, I'm signed in. Um, you can see my little face here on top. Uh, the second thing we did is we restructured all of our uh, playground to have all of these nice sections. Uh, first with the docs, where you have the ability to see uh, our documentation in there and all the different attributes and all the different properties and the events that this uh, actually renders. But also we have the ability now to have our HTML and our React component side by side. So for example, if I go to HTML, you're gonna see our HTML, the JavaScript file that, or the code that might be here or the CSS code and same thing for React. So now you actually have the ability to copy that code, bring that into your app and you are good to go. So now you know exactly how to bring React capabilities straight inside your app if you're building a spa, if you're building um, an SPFX web part, all of those will be how you do that. What is also really, really cool is we added a small button here on top, that button right there. That button actually creates on the fly a stack blitz capability. Um, and what it does here, it allows you to edit that code and really start playing around this capability to um, um, improve it, to uh, match it to your own business scenarios. Why did we do that? Is to really give you the control you need to be able then afterwards to share with, with us when you want to say maybe there's a bug in the toolkit or maybe, hey, I'd love to, to make that scenario available. Can you come and help us? That's exactly what we're doing. Now it takes a couple uh, seconds and then you're going to see um, in one or two seconds our agenda loading side by side here. So that's really, really cool. It's really powerful um, to be able to expand to Stagblitz to be able to continue your development journey. Um, one thing that I want to show from a, a breaking change perspective, here I already have an HTML one, so basically the web component version of it. Uh, you will now have to register all the components you need. So to have, for example, in this case, to have the theme toggle here and the agenda component here, in our app.js, here, you will see here that we are registering all the MGT components. Um, without this code, the entire capability on the right will now be fully blank. Why? Because now it tells um, your build engine, do two things, register the components in the UI, but also build them, bring them in your, uh, your package. This one is the register MGT components. It registers everything. There's no gain here, but you can go at the level of every single component, register MGT person, register MGT login. That's gonna really, really help with bundle size. You will not be able to use MGT without registering any of these components. If you're using React, we're already taking care of that. You won't have to do it with React because we're already wrapping the web components and we're going to do the registration uh, for you. So that's, um, well, basically those are the things that I wanted to show um, uh, to you today. Um, lots of things coming up were, as I said, potentially a couple of uh, days away from the, um, the release of the Microsoft Graph Toolkit before. We'd love to get your feedback. You can already install it. Um, all documentation is on our repo. And with that, I'll hand it back to you, uh, Vesa, and thanks for being there today.